Well, hello on this um, Monday, September 23rd. One of the assigned readings for today is from the book of James, the fourth chapter. James writes, Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and God will exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against another or judges another speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. So who then are you to judge your neighbor? Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money. Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. Well, some of that's quite heavy for a Monday morning, <laughs> but certainly the the gist of the first part, I'd have to go back and read James more closely. I don't know if there's any specific things going on um, that causes him to really want them to where it says, let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Um, I guess in other places in scripture that happens when people are failing to be attentive to others suffering, that why are you out partying when your neighbor is having such a hard time or the nation is having such a hard time? Um, that's just a guess. I don't know if that's truly the context for this. But then this um, judging your neighbor, I think that's something that um, I fall into that trap regularly, and um, I'm sure others do as well. Uh, hopefully it never comes out of my mind and out my mouth, but um, when it even dwells in your mind, you know that you're not thinking as highly of your neighbor as we are called to. We're not um, wishing what is best for our neighbor. Uh, I, Renee and I talk in our morning walks, and politics has been nasty certainly since the printed paper, and I'm sure you might even be able to go back to cave scrawlings if they had HOAs and, and, and that, that maybe the, it was bad. But there's, but it's just the fact that we have access to so much 24 hours a day, seven days a week, versus a, a daily newspaper or something that might get you worked up for the morning, but then you settle down. So it really is an important for uh, a means of having a holistic view on life to take in enough news to be informed and to feel that you're, again, you're confident in choices for voting, etc. But to just put yourself in the blender of it daily is not a healthy dynamic, certainly not for me and for others I know. Um, so to be able to take the time, again, Renee and I built it into our day to, to do a morning walk as many days of the week as we can. And just get that fresh air and movement is, is helpful. And uh, hearing the birds singing um, is just a nice connection with, with nature, which always is, has a soothing effect for me. Uh, the other part, this is the new Revised Standard Version that says this last line. I think this, well, maybe this. Sorry, this is the revised standard version. It says, anyone then who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. The new international version, NIV, has that word a little bit different. And from memory, I think it says, anyone then who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it is sin to them. And I thought that qualifier, sin to them, was, was interesting. Because, again, I think it goes back to just... Um, Maybe a connection here would be in Luke's Gospel where it says, to whom much is given, much is expected. So I think that goes with knowledge as well. Look, if you know it's the wrong thing to do and you do it, it's sin. If you are ignorant of it, maybe it's the first time you've encountered it in life and you do something and it's the wrong thing, um, <clears throat> again, chalking that up to ignorance and hopefully learning and do better next time. So again, it was just that interesting qualifier in the New International Version. So that might be a little... 
word geeky, but it's it's fun for me comparing the different translations because sometimes it just makes me view the scripture slightly differently, which is which is helpful. We had a great time yesterday at worship with uh, welcoming Bishop the South Carolina Synod Bishop Ginny Abisher in our midst, not only the Bishop of the Synod, but also mother of a Lutheran campus ministry alum, uh, Micah Abisher. So that was fun to have her. And um, that's about it for this morning, so let me pray. Lord, thank you for this new day, and thank you for the gift of scripture, the gift of wisdom of people who've gone before us and um, are helping to show us the way. Give you thanks for Jesus, and most especially in, as we continue to learn from his life and seek to follow him. Pray for your Holy Spirit to give us that wisdom, that guidance, that encouragement and, uh, and correction as needed. Uh, these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you have a blessed day today, and uh, Pastor Josh will be with you in the morning. Bye-bye.